Welcome to the Path Podcast, where we will travel the lives of some bold women, from dreams to detours to destiny. She did not choose this path. This path chose her. This is the Path Podcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome back, Path listeners, to another episode of the Path Podcast with your sister, your motivator, your confidence builder, the one who believes that purpose is bigger than obstacles. I have a question out there for you, Path listeners. Who out there has ever loved and lost? Love and lost something in your life. The grief of what was like great health, the marriage, a relationship, finances, and what might have been even dreams if I had finished college. And there's so much more. Although they are all very different, we all can experience some form of grief. Here to help us unpack this is an amazing guest. She is my soror, and she is Dr. Sonia Strider. I want to help everyone to help me welcome in Dr. Strider to the show. Hello. How are you, Dr. Strider? Hey, I'm great. I'm great. I'm great. It's a wonderful day. Wonderful day. I am so excited that you're here, and we're going to jump right into the show. Um, You mind if I say Sonia sometimes, if I... Forgive me if I don't say Dr. You can Sonia. always say Sonia. You can always say that. <laughs> I want to put that respect on her name, everyone out there. You can always so say Sonia. Sometimes I forget try. I even have doctor. You can always <laughs> say Sonia. So Dr. Sonia, tell me, we're going to tell everyone about what the show is about, but tell us a little bit about yourself first, if you don't mind. Yeah. So I'm Sonia Strider. I am a, um, my professional job is I work for the Centers for Disease Control as a um, project officer. I work in the Division of Violence Prevention. And, um, you know, I do all kinds of other stuff. I have a bachelor's degree from in medical technology. So I went a long way from project officer from the lab to project officer um, from the Virginia Commonwealth University. And I have a master's degree and a doctorate degree from Walden University, both in public health with a concentration in community and <clears throat> health education, community health and health education. Mm-hmm. I am a mother of, um, I have a daughter who's a senior at um, Middle Georgia State University. And uh, so I just have one and I, um, you know, co- would consider myself hopefully a community activist. I like to work in the community and get out there and get my hands a little dirty with the people. Yes. Yes. Well, that's wonderful. And everyone, again, I know when I have ask the guests to tell us about themselves. They don't tell us everything. So maybe we'll touch on some of this stuff in here. And as I've already stated that she is my soror. So we are in the illustrious uh, sorority of Delta Sigma Theta sorority. That's right, none greater. So thank you again for being here with us. Absolutely. Let me tell everyone what the show is about. Today, we're gonna talk to uh, Dr. Sonia about the losses that define our lives, (laughs) how grief, can compound over time and what that means because I read something in her one of her bios where she said it was a compound emotion that she realized and grief recovery from the emotional loss of any relationship so those are some of the things we'll talk about we may talk about more but I like to start the show off uh Dr. Sonia asking my guest tell me about the younger before doctor but Sonia, who thought she had life all figured out. I like to say around 18 when you thought it had it all figured out and what were your hopes and dreams and are you doing any of that today? Um, I am, you know, I am, I think when I was around 18, again, like I said, I have a bachelor's degree in medical technology. So, I, you know, I didn't want to be a um, go to med school because I was like, that takes too long, costs too much money. <laughs> and um, but I always I have always wanted and had a passion for helping people. So, um, you know, I, I decided then that I wanted to be a medical technologist only to work in the lab for about five or six years and, and realize this really is not 
for me. Um, you know, I was way too extroverted to yeah. be locked away in the lab because, you know, they were always, always like kind of where's Waldo because I've wandered off somewhere. Yeah. And um, so I was like, let me find me another life. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, um, but, but I think from a very early age, um, I have kind of always lived by the motto that, um, you know, to whom much is given, much is required. Yeah. So I have always wanted to help people. Mm -hmm. um, always kind of identified people who needed my help or mm -hmm. thought that, you know, I could help them in whatever their situation, particularly, you know, um, the underserved and, and kind of trying to help be the voice for the underserved. I, for, from a very early age, I think mm -hmm. I can remember that being one of my passions. Wonderful. That's wonderful. You got that a lot from your parents doing a lot of community service or you just think it was just in um, you? I, I think that, um, I think I got it from my mother because, mm -hmm. um, well, my, my grandfather was a, um, a, a Navy veteran. So mm -hmm. there were always, it seems like people always, um, you know, seems like he was always helping somebody, you know, somebody okay. moving, somebody doing something. Mm -hmm. um, and, but from my mother, I can always remember um, even though, you know, we didn't have necessarily a lot, mm -hmm. um, but I always remember her helping people, yes. you know, people coming to our house for, for dinner, mm -hmm. you know, her always cooking enough so that in case people came by, um, you know, her, you know, packing, I can remember, you know, her packing extra in her lunch for, you know, a coworker who didn't, you know, didn't say it, but she, you know, kind of picked up on the fact that they didn't have much and, and we didn't have much either. So let's be yeah. clear about that. Um, yeah. But her, I can remember her, you know, doing that packing extra, mm -hmm. you know, she'd say so that, you know, blah, 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 you know, I can give them some of this and give them of some course. of that. And, um, and, and I think it just, it, is, it was always in her actions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that, um, you know, it just kind of, I think, spilled over, you know, okay. into us that, you know, this is, this is what you're supposed to do. Of course. And, and you know, what's interesting, you said you didn't have a lot, but sometimes they, we have, sometimes you have more than what others have. So oh, your absolutely. mother understood that, of course, absolutely. which is a true, yeah. is a true mm -hmm. statement. And yeah. so that's wonderful. So it definitely was already, already in you. Yeah. So let me move into this. I know I read about you where you started um, a program and you can tell me more if it's a program or if this is um, a nonprofit already itself, mm -hmm. but it's called a place for the heart. Tell me what is a place for the heart? I tell me and all the listeners what that is and, yeah. and where did it come from? So um, a place for the heart is, is my um, grief recovery. So I'm a certified grief recovery specialist and mm -hmm. I lost both of my parents within nine months of each other. Oh my. So I found myself in this ball of grief, right? But mm -hmm. when you have the persona that everyone thinks that you are strong and have it all together. And, mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, you can run from grief, but you can't hide. Right. So it's going to find you wherever you are, whatever yes. you do. And, um, but I, I thought I was, you know, I thought I was muddling through and then mm -hmm. I realized that I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I kind of started, you know, with therapy, but the one thing that really kind of drew me to being a grief recovery specialist or made me say that this is what I want to do mm -hmm. is because I think that um, after my parents died, so many people came to me who, you know, lost, recently lost their parents, recently lost. I used to say to my sister, like, have I become the expert on mama's dying or the, yeah. you know, the expert yeah. on daddy's dying? I mean, you know, it's like, yes. um, so then I thought, well, you know, if people are going to come to me and, you know, talk to me, I should probably surely figure out the right stuff to say <laughs> exactly so, exactly um, and let me ask you so let me ask I you this year before you move on because yes. everyone as you are here uh dr sonia you you have to we have to sit here and think about what you just said you lost both parents mm -hmm. within nine months of each other mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let me tell you for people out there because you know people hear you today and, you, and of course thankfully you've talked about it because you've come through you're fine and you healed from it. Not saying, I know you will tell us that you don't have, you know, those moments you think of everybody yeah, and, uh, absolutely. and have a moment that's healthy. That's mm -hmm. healthy, I believe. But we have to process that. 
because people, there are people out there hurting it. You know, better than me after COVID, you know, even though we know people are losing loved ones every day, unfortunately, like you said, mm-hmm. but after COVID and over a million deaths and, you know, the world is saying we're getting back to normal, but to some people that normal is not still there for them nope. because they've lost a loved one suddenly that they didn't expect the same way. I'm sure that you probably didn't expect to lose. You lost your mother first, right? Yes. My mother first. And then yes. your father. Then my father. Yep. Were you, was that expect you? I mean, I'm sorry. Um, well, actually that, neither right? one of them was expected. Right. So my mother went into the hospital for a very routine knee replacement surgery. And 14 days later, she was dead. She got sepsis. Um, yeah. They couldn't figure out where the infection was and they couldn't cure it. Um, and in some ways, I, I always think that she was tired. Yes. And I think that she just succumbed to or um, as when I had the, the priest come to give her her last rites, he he told her that, you know, if she felt like that she if she felt God calling her mm-hmm. and she wanted to go, that it was OK. Mm-hmm. And I think she, you know, felt like I'm tired. And my dad, um, who was, I probably thought was going to be living for, you know, forever and ever, at least that's what he used to say. Um, I felt the same about my dad. Yeah. I mean, you know, because my dad was one who lived life on his own terms and he, Mm -hmm. you know, he did his own thing. And, you know, you talk about, oh, don't do that. You'll get sick. And he'd be like, oh, you got to die from something. Mm -hmm. And um, so he was not sick, you know, not sick to the point of where you'd say death. I mean, he. Mm -hmm. And really, he didn't have any, um, you know, real illnesses, but he had um, he had a massive heart attack Hmm. Um, actually on his way to my dad used to like to walk and he used to go to parks. And he had apparently called a friend and was going to be meeting the friend at the park Mm -hmm. and um, uh, went in the bathroom and he had a heart attack and he was able to call um, 911. But uh, they got him to the hospital, but he didn't he didn't make it. Um, I'm so sorry to hear that, but it was, you know, yeah. very unexpected. So when, when they called me, I was like, who? Cause yes. like, no, yes, you good. It can't be um, real. Yeah, yeah. You know, it can't be, but so those things and in, in between that, I'll say Arlene, my, mm-hmm. uh, so my mother's only sister, yeah. um, passed away six months after my mother. So my mother passed away in December, oh, wow. my mm-hmm. aunt passed away in May and my dad passed away in September. So that was a year, that was a 12 month kind of um, riddled with, um, you know, with a lot of grief, right? So I had saw my, you know, my aunt had been sick. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it was trying to help my cousins through their grief, you know, while I was at the same time still, you know, kind of going through my grief, although I was saying I was cool, but, um, you know, still going through my grief and it was... um, it was a tumultuous year. You know, I had lost one of my very best friends um, the year before my mother passed away in December. I had lost one of my very good college friends in um, May of the April of that year. So that was 2015. So it had just been a year of, you know, losses. And I think my daughter had said it, said one day, she was like, when is it going to stop? You know, when is it? It's like, everybody you know that I'm close to and all these people that I love Mm -hmm. you know all at the same time and I and I've thought about you know she was 16 then Mm -hmm. what that's like to process that of course you know for a young person you know of course um and then I was like and I don't know if I'm processing it that well myself (laughs) but you know what and let me tell you I wanted to only bring that part back up so people would understand the person yes who you are and because of even what you're doing today, who better everyone out there could relate to anyone else going out there and understand loss, yeah. you know, and, and understand and, 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 and can really just understand and relate, you know? But so that's the reason why I really wanted to share because the way we move and, and do things now, because a place for the heart definitely came from the yes, heart. <laughs> it did. It, no, if it you had to put did. the heart someplace, I'm sure. Yep. Yep. I mean, and that, that, I mean, when I thought about names, um, I mean, the heart was just one of the things that, you of know, course. because when you are grieving, your heart is broken. 
Yes. You know, your heart is shattered, whether it's from divorce or bankruptcy yes. or, you know, illness or, you know, mm -hmm. the, the possibilities that were not, mm -hmm. your heart is broken. And so exactly. often we just try to glow, you know, we try to, to gloss over that, you yes. know, over that fact. And mm -hmm. so um, I really wanted what I was going to offer or hope that I would be able to offer mm -hmm to, I, I really want people to feel that it's heartfelt. You know, I exactly. want them to understand that I'm walking this with you, um, yes. you know, and, and I might not be, I'm probably not going to be able to solve it all for you, but if you can find some comfort and some yes. way to move on mm -hmm. in what I can give you um, through the grief recovery method, I, you know, I have done what I think I was supposed to do. Yes. And, and, and what's interesting is you said that you, everybody started coming to you. You wasn't sure if you were processing it good no. at the time because you, you definitely had not gone through any grief recovery, the, the, mm -hmm. the this method that you've, um, no. that helped you along. No. But so, and I just think some people innately have something in them where they keep moving, not saying, like you said, there was some things after everyone, you would hear her say later that she unpacked. But still, some people can still function look like, mm -hmm. you know, and but it's still oh, yeah. healthy. That's why I believe therapy is healthy, healthy it for is, everybody it is now. For everybody, everybody, everybody got something they can lay on the couch and talk about. It. Yes, they do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we all can lay on a couch and talk. I'm telling you, there's a whole bunch to unpack. But yeah, I mean, it was, um, you know, so in 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 getting the grief recovery method that helped me heal as well. Yes. But I just, you know, it was really important to me that I be able to help people in the right direction. You know, the last thing I wanted to happen was after you talk to me, you leave feeling worse. Yes. You know, exactly. so, like, so you wanted to get some certification that. behind right. you. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I wanted to make sure that I was, you know, giving people, you know, the best that I had. Exactly. And, um, and I feel like, you know, getting to the best that you had, I feel like I'm a lifelong learner. So there's yes, always stuff too. to learn. So, you know, now I've gotten an advanced um, grief recovery method certificate. And so yes. I, um, because only you know, a doctor would make sure that you have to go to the next level. <laughs> I want to make sure, you know, I want to make sure that I can, can deliver for people. Of course. Um, of course. You know, at least what they, um, and what they're needing that will get them through. Cause exactly. you know, you know, like I know Arlene, that grief is a, a it's a day to day, yes. a minute by minute process. So, you know, if I can help yes. you get through these next 15 minutes, then, you know, you, um, and I give you something that you can go back and think on. Yes. You know, I, I like all of that. Yeah, of course. And that's wonderful to hear it that way, because even when, while you were, I was, I read an article, another lady was speaking about her loss and, 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 and she was saying that she had lost her sister and mm -hmm. before she could see him, like when she got back home after the funeral, before she could unpack her bags, her, something happened to her brother. He got in a car accident and she was heading back out, unfortunately, because he passed. And she said, you know, by the time they got back from his, it was Christmas time. They just decided to go to her parents' home to celebrate. It's like they were all numb. They were just moving and existing. And yep. eventually it got to a point she collapsed. Yeah. You know, it was just because of the weight of everything. Mm -hmm. and, yep. and, you know, people moving, but not dealing with, nope. you know. Nope. So what with people coming to you, like you said, they were coming to you. You didn't, you were surprised they were coming to you. Yeah, I was but, really. Yeah. <laughs> So, so what do you think it was before you went to the meth, the recovery method, grief recovery method that what, what, what it is about you? Because let me tell you what I, let me tell everyone out there what I think. I met Dr. Sonia just on the phone a few months ago. We, I felt like we connected because yes. I think we're such, we with some alike, somewhat right. alike. And I talk all my stuff out, Sonia. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I think, you know, you probably that person who ex maybe, I don't know, you tell me, express yourself and you, yes. I don't know if you were able to talk some of it out or so do you, do you think that's some things that kind of help you and, you know, to keep, help you move and was able to say, okay, now I'm going to go get help for this, for me, or talk yeah. to someone. Yeah, I do. I think that, um, you know, one is, is just kind of realizing, you know, even that, you know, it's the old adage of being, you know, sick and tired of being sick and tired. And, tired. Mm -hmm. and um, I mean, I just think that 
one day I was just like, you know what, I'm like tired of crying, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, and questioning, you know, whether or not I did the right thing because mm-hmm. my mother had been put on, um, on life support. So, you know, mm-hmm. we had put her on a ventilator because they said her lungs needed to rest and all of this. And, you know, there's not a day that goes by that I don't question, you know, whether yeah. or not I did the right thing in my heart of hearts. I know that I did, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, when you're really deep into that grief, you question, you know, and you, you know, double question everything that happened, you know, like I play that week out in my head, mm-hmm. you know, like, well, should I have done this? And should I have done that? And probably if I had a did this, then this would have happened. But the reality mm-hmm. is, is that if I had done any of those things, what was going to happen, happened. Gonna happen. Yeah. And, you know, one thing, and I'll just say this quickly, because one thing when my mom was, um, you know, when they were saying, okay, well, you know, we've done all we can do. Mm-hmm. And um, my prayer was that was for healing, mm-hmm. but I had the nerve, you know, the audacity to tell <laughs> God that, um, you know, I, I pray that you heal her, but I'm okay yeah. if the healing doesn't happen on this side, right? Because mm-hmm. my faith was that, okay, so I know that healing doesn't mean it's going to happen here. It could, you know, it's the ultimate healing when she mm-hmm. goes. So, you know, I said that, And then, you know, when they um, started saying, you know, well, that it was happening, then I started questioning and then I had to come back and say, well, you you know, you had the audacity to tell them that you were okay with it. And um, so I think that even in my healing Mm -hmm. and figuring out, you know, like what I do now, I had to continue to go back to that Mm -hmm. and that I trusted you then and I got to trust you now. Um, on, you know, but, but that doesn't happen for everybody. Right. Cause some people are are angry with God after a loss or after, you know, and I get it. Cause I still was wondering, like, you know, I've done all, I didn't pay my tithes. I didn't, you know, like my mama paid her tithes and my mom, you know, like what's up God. Thank you. But, um, you know, but I think that, so that it's not that reality for everybody. Cause some people are really angry and and I get it. You know, I don't even try to talk people out of, Mm-hmm. being angry. I have a cousin who's a pastor and he told me that God expects you to be angry Yes, and that God is okay if you're angry, you know? Yes. So that mm-hmm. kind of made it feel better for me. But I think that as I worked through what I was feeling, yes. that I was able to um, project that to other mm-hmm. people. And just mm-hmm. real quick, you asked me what made me want. So I, I had done the sorority. We had a prayer breakfast mm-hmm. and one of the sor- sorrows had asked me, um, if I would do um, a testimony Mm -hmm. about, you know, about losing my mother, you know, the grief and, and all of that. And, Mm -hmm. you know, so it's like, you know, okay, yeah, right. Cause again, here I'm like, God, you know, what you want me to say to people. And um, so I did that. And then the next year when we had the prayer breakfast, a young lady came up to me and said, uh, I was at the prayer breakfast last year. Mm-hmm. when you gave your testimony and my mother died this year. Mm. And she said, you know, I just remember some of the things that you said. Now, I will tell you, I don't remember what I said. Cause you know, Arlene, we didn't talk about wow. this. I just be talking. Yeah. I don't remember what I said, right? I don't remember what it was. <laughs> I know it was from the heart because if I, you know, if I was talking, was I don't remember what I said, right? Yes. And um, And she said, I just want you to know that that has helped me. Wow. You know, through, she's like, I wish that I had have been able to call you, you know, mm-hmm. but that has helped me through all this time. And it was that moment that I decided that um, I might be able to do this. Yes. You know, I might be able to, you know, help and help other people along this grief line. Now, I know that I can't help everybody and everybody's experience, you know, with me won't be the same. Yes. But again, I always hope that it is an experience that is, um, that they will tell has come from the heart. Oh, you know what? You can tell it comes from the heart to you. It's just seemed like it's just a normal thing. And it was right. It was truly from your heart, whatever mm-hmm. you were saying and your mm-hmm. testimony, of mm-hmm. course. And, but that's what she needed. So yeah. That, and that's what, I, how I believe God works. Yeah. I, I do too. Yeah, I think so too. He yeah. just, he uses you to do what he has planned for you to do, which, you know, part of this whole year, I've been thinking, um, you know, he was preparing me for such a yeah. time, you know, for a time such as this. Mm-hmm. And this was my purpose. This was your purpose. Um, this was my purpose. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, I think that I always 
you know, would say, I want to do, I want to be doing God what you want me to do. Exactly. You know, and I want to be where you want me to be and in the place where I can be the most impactful. Mm -hmm. And the more I think about, you know, at least this past year, especially, Mm -hmm. it has been that this is where he, you know, this is where he wants me to be. Yes. It's, it's amazing. Cause even on the pot path on the podcast, my intro says she did not choose this path. Mm-hmm. This path chose her. It did. Yes. Yep. Because who would have sat there and we know we have death is a part of life, you know, a, tr- a process mm-hmm. of the, our life. So we know it happens, but we still don't expect it normally. No. We mm-hmm. must admit You're never it. prepared. You're never, You're never prepared. prepared. Nope. Never. And so, but so now this is like a passion of yours. It's a calling and Mm -hmm. people are coming to you even when you weren't expecting it. So it's like, this is where you, you're supposed to be, obviously. Yeah. I I believe it. It amazes me again, how God works. And he knew you would pick this mantle up and run with it because everyone couldn't handle this the way you handle it. Yeah. The same way I work in my divorce um, ministry at my church. Mm -hmm. And the same way I know most, a lot of women can't handle losing that mm-hmm. spouse and then here you are and and it's the hopes and dreams right. of what the marriage would look like of what it would have been yes yeah. the, it, moving the grief, out of home the grief of what died agree so to speak about those you know how how it all relates and you know how you because you help not just people who have lost a loved one but you right. still will talk to people who have gone through grief in that manner that's grieving that marriage or what life would look like speak about that yeah because you know there there are over more than 40 grief causing experiences you know and like I said they they include you know divorce and um you know relationship breakups and you know losing your house and Mm -hmm. you know maybe you had a car that got repossessed you may have lost your job you Mm -hmm. you know you broke up you you know you lost a child you you know had a miscarriage you may can never have children But I think that, um, you know, we don't necessarily put those things in the category of grief, right? Mm -hmm. It's, um, and and not in in society doesn't always allow us to grieve those things. So, you know, Mm -hmm. we push them on, you know, it's Mm -hmm. like, okay, well, I lost that house. You know, I'm gonna just go ahead. But you know, wait a minute, let me, let me take a minute to say how heartbroken I am. Mm -hmm. You know, because grief is really about being heartbroken. So it doesn't matter what breaks your heart. It still needs to heal, Mm. you know, so. Oh, that's good, Dr. Sonia. You know, I, so I think that we just don't allow ourselves. And that was one of the things, Mm -hmm. you know, you were talking about how I said what kind of led me when I started doing this work. Mm -hmm. um, And as a matter of fact, each time I have sessions with people, I learn different things about myself, right? I can put different things into some of these categories that I never thought about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it, it's one of those things that we don't ever necessarily recognize some of these things Mm -hmm. as grief. Yeah. I'll give you a quick example. So, you know, I was a latchkey kid, like, you know, most of us in the, you know, the <laughs> yes. 60s, 70s babies, yeah. you know, we had uh-huh. all the babysitters and stuff. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when we lived in Ohio, you know, my mother was a single mother. We lived two doors from the school. Mm-hmm. So I literally could hear the bell ring in the house. My sister and brother are six and seven years older than me. Mm-hmm. And I always been, you know, a little bit grown for my age, if you can believe that. Uh-huh. <laughs> And, um, but so, um, I, I was in the, must've been, maybe it was pre-K. Yes. Um, it was whatever it is that you go to school half a day. Right. Mm-hmm. So, Pre-K. um, I had fired my babysitter, which was my great aunt. Okay. And I was like, I told my mom, I don't need her cause she don't be watching me no way. So my mother it. was like, well, you know, um, you need somebody to be, I said, no, I don't. I hear the bell. I was like, she just be here. I hear the bell when it ring and I know I need to put my coat on and leave the house and blah, blah, blah. You know, so we lived in a two family house, mm-hmm. another lady, single parent, um, lived downstairs from us. And, um, so I was like, I don't need that babysitter. Yeah. And so my mother started letting me, cause I just pitched such a fit and the lady downstairs would be home. Mm-hmm. And so she started letting me. So at four, now I was, I was so short that I had to have a stool to step on to lock the door, right? And, um, but I would hear the bell ring mm-hmm. and I was watching TV, you know, when Mr. Green Jeans started to put on his jacket. 
um, on Captain Kangaroo, right? When Mr. Green Jeans started to put on his jacket, I knew it was time for me to leave the house. Yeah. And, um, and so I did that. But in one of my sessions, when we were talking about, you know, the things that you lose and you lost, and it was one of my clients mm -hmm. who said, um, you know, and I was like, well, you know, I was good with that. And, you know, yeah. she said, were you never scared? And I said, maybe I was, you know, mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, I said, now that think about it, you know, so we were putting down the things that we lost. Yes. So she was saying to me, now this is my client said to me, well, you should put down that you lost your childhood, mm -hmm. you know, in, in, um, you know, putting yourself out. Because you were I helping her, telling her how she needed to do stuff. So exactly. she. Right. And so she was like, well, you lost your childhood. And I was like, well, no, because, you know, I fired the babysitter. Yeah. You know, yeah. I was the one that fired her. It wasn't like my mom was like, well, you're going to stay on by yourself. You know, I was like, I'm the one that fired her. And she was like, yeah, but, you know, and I said, well, you know, you're sometimes right. I was afraid. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. sometimes I was afraid, but again, I ain't want the babysitter, so I wasn't going to say I was afraid, right? Yes. <laughs> but, um, you know, I said, but I never had thought of it that way, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I had never even thought of that mm -hmm. as even a loss of, you know, childhood or innocence or, you of know, course. any of that, because again, I felt like I fired the babysitter. Exactly. So I was doing what I wanted exactly. to do. That you was know? your choice, you think, and so. That was my choice, yes. right. But mm -hmm. I, I never even thought of that mm -hmm. until she said it. It was just a true you thing. You know, and then I thought, you know what? That's true. It is. Because at, at five, I guess I was, four mm -hmm. or five. I mean, I guess I was five. I was probably five. Yeah. I should have been putting myself out, you know. Mm -hmm. But I mean, again, I was grown. Yes. So I was like, you know. <laughs> needs this babysitter thing i mean what that's overrated a babysitter <laughs> it's overrated i mean like who you know i was like i mean i come home from school i let myself in the lady downstairs would look out the door make sure i went in the house exactly. and lock the door behind me and i was you know i go in there eat some snacks and watch tv okay. and you know <laughs> so it was it was great until my sister and brother came home you know they were in um junior high school so yes. they got home you know and when they got home, but I was, you know, but I never thought of that, yes. right, as a loss of a childhood or an innocence because, but there's so many other things like that yeah. that happen in our lives that we just accept as that's how they are. Exactly. And and we pack that up with us because grief is a compound emotion. So yes. we just pack all of those things on top of each other. Because that's Until what I read. Get to you that said breaking that. Point. You read, I read yeah. where you said during grief recovery, a program you are, that you're now certified in, everyone again. Right. You it helped you to, to understand how grief is a compound emotion and how the grief of your past was showing up in your life, you know, for for you at the time. Yes. And for other people, mm -hmm. even today. Yeah. And I heard you yeah. also say, and many other losses were just hanging around incomplete. And yeah. And, and, and just like even maybe thinking as a young child and that it was some, un, you know, things that you didn't think about. So what, what is it you think, you know, because you, like you said, I love what you said earlier. I, I try to write it down. Society doesn't allow us to, to mm -hmm. mourn some of these other no. things that mm -hmm. people don't yeah. really consider grief. You think it's only mm -hmm. the loss of a loved one, yeah. but it's so much more. That's yeah, it's so much more. And I, I mean, I think, like I say, for me, like that might have, that could be considered, you know, one of those things. I think that's when, you know, I may have started to develop the, I mean, I, like I said, I was always kind of grown and bossy yes. anyway, but I think that that was when I developed this, um, this shell mm -hmm. that I had to be, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because I started doing it so early. Yeah. Not because I had to, right? Because again, that was what I chose to do for whatever reason. But, you know, I think but that's where that whole thing started mm -hmm. from. And so then, you know, you kind of you may you maybe even mourn the fact of, you know, being more vulnerable. Yes. You know, and and being able to, you know, have some of these other experiences mm -hmm. that, you know, that you you might not have had. Of course. And, you know, did. So, I think that with everything that happens in your life that you lose, whether it's, you know, I didn't get the job that I wanted. Mm -hmm. I didn't get, you know, the guy I wanted mm -hmm. I, or it didn't work out or, you know, the heck I go to the doctor on step on the scale and I ain't the weight I want. <laughs> exactly. I mean, all of those things. <laughs> yes. 
all of those things, I mean, you know, they all, they all pile up. They do. And if we don't ever do anything with them, that's when we fall down because, you know, the house of cards can only get to be so tall. Of course. Before it just, you know, it falls right out from under you. Mm -hmm. And so usually when it falls from under you is when there is something as devastating as a death or a divorce. Yes. But when you really work through the grief recovery method, and you start to unpack your, your, we do this thing called a timeline. Mm -hmm. So your timeline of losses, mm -hmm. you know, so many people start to notice where they've start, where they've had losses yeah. that they never dealt with before. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, it just is, it just happened. It just was, mm -hmm. but that all is a part of what makes you who you are and how you handle, you know, the things before mm -hmm. and part of grief, you know, how we handle grief is socialized. You know, yes. we handle, we handle it like we've been taught to handle, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, so they tell you don't cry, you don't cry, mm -hmm. but why shouldn't I cry? Because I'm hurt. Yes. You know, so it, it is, it's what we've learned yes. that we then just keep piling on and we carry it on. Mm -hmm. And then when this big thing happens, you know, this death, this divorce, this, you know, lose a job or a house or these kinds of things mm -hmm. you don't really know what to do because you're processing it like you've been taught exactly exactly and you know you what you're processing it that way and even interesting when you say the timeline you do a timeline of losses because mm -hmm. even if for example you lose that job or, or the marriage ends in you know your later years and I've heard somebody else says like my mother passed when I was 12 years old mm -hmm. and so people say you know if and and let me go use my divorce, for example, that pain of feeling that divorce. Sometimes they say you feel that it's a different type of pain, but it's a pain nevertheless. But sometimes you can go back to that. I can go back to that child, child who that first loss I, I really experienced. Yeah. And, and, and if you don't yeah. learn how to handle those emotions, like you said, you're just adding it on to now I'm going to add it on to when I was the 30 some year old divorce right. woman. And then of course, if I don't deal with that, then whatever else, like I lost a few jobs. You must Right. Now, all that just, it just piles on because, you, you know, and it. then the root of that is that, you know, at 12 years old, when you've lost your mother, mm -hmm. now when I'm going through a divorce, I don't have my mother to call. Oh gosh. I said that. Trust me. <laughs> right. You know, because, you know, so now, I'm, so now, now I'm double, you know, now I'm, I'm double the loss yes. because now I'm feeling that even more because I don't have her to call yes. and, and I've lost this love yes. and, you know, and then I, I didn't came and I didn't lost this job or, yes. you know, I, I don't want my children to know that I feel like this. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I got to hide this, you know, this feeling, mm -hmm. but it, the things just keep, they keep piling up. Keep and if we don't up. ever, you know, part of what we do when we do that timeline of loss is mm -hmm. we talk about how we process that loss. Yes. You true. know, what did you do to process that loss? You mm -hmm. know, what did you do to, you know, how did you get in touch with it, in tune with or talk about how it mm -hmm. made you feel? Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, you know, people, you know, generally say nothing. You know, what did you do? Nothing. Nothing. You know, I just went on. Mm -hmm. You know, I lost the job. I got up the next day and started looking for a job. But you know, you it's okay if you took a minute to be like, I'm hurt. I'm you hurt. know, I gave all I had to that job. Yes. Or, you know, I, I was doing everything that I thought I was supposed to do, you know, mm -hmm. but you know, we often don't take that minute to take that deep breath and, and you know, kind of process what has happened. Exactly. So do do you when you're doing your program? Does it work the same for someone who has lost a loved one as well as someone else, for example, who's mourning, you know, the loss of a, a, a dream or a job or anything like that or health? Well, you know, Arlene, because a loss is a loss, right? Yes, so again, to, it's yeah. all these things that break your heart, yes. right? So it's, you know, I'm my heart's broken no matter what broke it. Yes. You know, or no matter who broke it. And the the process of the process or the steps of mending my heart are the same, are the same. you know, the, the, the cause for the, for the heartbreak mm -hmm. is different, Yes, but the process and the steps that you take are the same, exactly. you know, because you can, you can be mourning, you know, innate object objects, yes. you mourn people, you mourn, you know, all of those things. Of so course. the process of kind of, we call it, um, in the grief recovery method, we call it completing the loss. Mm. So that's when you identify it. That is when you, you know, you talk about how it made you feel and then you complete it by closing it out. You know, so sometimes, um, you know, we write this letter of completion, letter. you know, that could be to the house, mm -hmm. you know, 
I, I hate that I lost this house. And, you know, I rode by you the other day and now I see that the shutters are falling off. Mm-hmm. So I'm good because I yeah. <laughs> that was going to be something exactly. I was going to have to pay for. Right. But I mean, you know, but but in that way of completing that feeling and completing that emotion. Mm-hmm. And so, so often when we are grieving, um, when people are grieving, it's, you know, it's so hard because they've never completed exactly. that grief process. They've never put a closure to that. I hope everyone you know? is listening to that because, and when every, whoever, whomever is listening to this, you, 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 you go through your life and you think about this, those things and, and you really yeah. will sit there and say, did I really complete what, right. that, whatever I that loss yeah. is? Right. Because so often, you know, we put a comma where a period should be. Yes. <laughs> you know, so, you know, because I'm going to come back to this. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Mm-hmm. You know, let's go on and complete this now. Mm-hmm. And because then, because otherwise it kind of, it, it staggers you, right? It so it keeps you. you from being able to move forward yes. because you're still going back yes. to whatever, you know, whether, even if it's the loss of a job, because now I'm scared yes. when I go on another job, yes. you know, instead of me coming to the con- a closure mm-hmm. on the fact that, okay, I got fired from that job. Okay, I might learn some stuff. Uh, you know, I, I know some stuff. Maybe that wasn't even the job for exactly. me. And now when I go to my new position, mm-hmm. I'm taking along what I've learned. Exactly. You know, and, but I've also closed that heartbreak from losing the other mm-hmm. position. And I can, you know, go into it fresh. So, you know, we don't go into new things fresh when mm-hmm. we take the grief with us. And, and, and to go back and piggyback, when I told you I talked my stuff out, I told, I don't know if you know, I've been laid off three times in four years. So See? laid off in four years is to me is like being fired almost. So let me tell right. you how I, I, I worked through the completion. I told everybody, I said, I know I didn't do nothing wrong when they let me go. I know I, my, my reviews was top notch and they had, to end, yeah. they said they had to end the position and let that position go. Okay. And then of course, like you right. said, but still I was mad. Don't get me wrong for one or two of them. One of one right. was you be hurt. One was, hurt. I was hurt. Yeah. I was hurt by one of yeah. them. I'm like, really? So, but yes. you know, but I still knew I did great work. I'm like, right. okay, still like everything. I'm like, you gonna come back looking for somebody like me. Right. But I have to do that because I felt like you would have told me if I wasn't doing nothing, wasn't doing it right. And you didn't say anything. And you didn't say anything. So I felt like I knew I was doing good. Not right. perfect, but you know, good right. work. So right. you're right, you have to complete those things. And I, I, I love hearing that part because that is so important with life, with, with mm-hmm. everything. And so how long is the program if people come and, and sit down? With so you? the grief recovery method, it's, um, it's seven or eight weeks. It just depends. So, you know, as you can tell, I like to talk. So sometimes we go eight weeks because, you know, we got some stuff to finish yes. up, but, um, but it's seven or eight weeks. Um, there's a book that's called the, um, the grief, the grief recovery handbook. And we usually, um, we work through that handbook. Mm -hmm. We talk and do the exercises in the handbook. It can be done, um, either one-on-one or it can be done as a group. Yes. It, um, you know, my, my dream is that, um, I would be able to do this, um, with people and help them, you know, get through to the next stage and and grieving. And, you know, so if that's one-on-one or if that's in a group, um, you know, groups sometimes are easier because there are other people to um, work. So the workbook requires different exercises that you do, you know, like I say, the timelines and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, it's sometimes easier to work with a group because, you know, you can get all of those things done. Um, but one-on-one sometimes, <clears throat> you know, you, you, which is also good because there may be something we need to stay on longer Of course, and, you know, so we can, you know, we can do that and stay on those things longer. So, okay. Okay. you know, I, I like, um, I like to do it as a group, mm-hmm. but I also like to do it one-on-one. Of course. And everyone out there, you hear that she, un- again, unfortunately, unfortunately knows this topic too well. So you consider connecting with Dr. Sonia, you are getting someone who understands you. You can tell you have a wealth of knowledge in this, unfortunately, with the experience, of course, but with, right. you know, like you said, getting all yeah. of the certifications you need yeah. and everything. Yeah. But then let me, let's move into something that all of this involves grief. So I always have to ask, I'll ask you the question about how you relax, but, um, cause it's such a heavy topic. A lot of times you deal with yeah. people. 
I, I read where you co-authored a book entitled Embracing the Battle, Tried by the Storm, an anthology of women's stories about loss and grief. Tell me about that. Yeah, so, you know, as again, it's one of those things when you have the audacity to ask God to bring something to you, right? Yes. And um, so I think, you know, I had been saying, oh, you know, I want to write a book. I want to, you know, I want to write mm -hmm. a book. I mean, I don't, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know why I was saying it, but anyway, um, but uh, another friend of mine, Asara, one day she put out on her Facebook page, oh, you know, if you have a story to tell and, you know, you want to write about it, you mm -hmm. know, you know, one of the, you know, answer here, you know, below. So I was like, you know, okay. I mean, I didn't know why it was or what it was for, but I was like, yeah, I want to, you know, I want to do that. Yes. And um, so then she, you know, reached out and she was talking about this project that she was working on. So um, there are actually two volumes. So she kind of um, separated out the stories um, from the different people who um, are part of the book. Mm -hmm. um, so one is, you know, kind of more with things that deal kind of around grief and loss. Mm -hmm. The other one is around, you know, other kinds of tragedies mm -hmm. and, and things like that, but how, but it's really about overcoming yeah. and how you got through. And so it's really, um, I think I'm in chapter seven, but mm -hmm. I, I forget how many chapters there are yes. in the book, but each one, you know, is someone's story and it is how they, um, you know, it's kind of how you got from, you know, from the heartbreak to the sunshine, you know, and then you got to go through that battle. You got to go through that, um, through the fire, mm -hmm. you know, um, tried by the fire. So it's, you know, the Phoenix rising kind of, yeah. kind of story, you know, we've gone through this, but, you know, look what we've become and look what we've done. So, um, you know, they're like I said, they're two two volumes and, and they're great stories. Um, not great in, yeah. you know, because of the content is heavy, but um, I think well written. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people have shared, you know, some very intimate and and really, um, you know, some tragic things and some, you know, some happy endings, but of um, all to be a motivation for those, you know, who may be going through, you know, some of the same some of the same things. And I think that. Um, it was great that what Nicole Jones is the sir who, who um, put it together. Yeah. And it, um, it was a great idea. You know, I it think is. it was a great idea and it, it unleashed for a lot of us, the desire that we may have had to put our stories down. So it kind of gave us an opportunity. Like when I go back and read it now, it's like, Oh, I should have said this. Yeah. Oh, I should have said that, you know, like I've rewritten that story in my head, you know, a of million course. times, every time I, every time I look at it, I'm like, Oh, I left out all of this, but, but that, that goes to show. That's why another book would have to come out because well, yeah, and that's why yeah, people and thinking about look, it. look at all these authors out here who write a hundred books, you know, that's true they yeah, that's true. Stuff. Yeah. so you need yeah, to be writing it down thinking about it I yeah because you know one of the things um that I, I talk about and you know we've talked about is that um I think that my mother probably I'm not not unlike mm -hmm. many other single women you know from her era and this era mm -hmm. you know she she had so many battles yeah. and as an adult mm -hmm. um I can identify them, right? Yeah. So as an adult, I, one of the things that I talk about in my chapter of the book is, is how I learned. So my mother was, um, was on the ventilator for um, five days. Mm -hmm. But what I talk about is how much I learned mm -hmm. or really understood about her and her life as a woman mm -hmm. in those five days that I sat beside her bed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my sister and I had a trade off of who would go back home and, and tell my daughter and my niece what was going on and who would stay there with my mother, mm -hmm. you know, because we couldn't both be gone or, you know, and um, and I say that my mother chose, I mean, I say that my mother was probably saying, I got the short end of the stick, right? <laughs> I got the short straw because I'm not known to be the the compassionate, yes. the care, you know, I'm, I'm the come in and let's make this thing happen. Yes. Let's handle business. Get it done. So, you know, um, my sister is the compassionate mm -hmm. and the caring and the, you know, let me wash you down and let me comb your hair. Yes. That ain't me. Yes. And I'm okay with that. You know, it's like, I just got to understand who I am, yes. right? And so I, I, as I watched and laid and looked at my mom, I thought she's probably thinking, how in the heck did, she, did I get the short end of the stick? You know, oh, it's like, what? Where is the how other did one? I get the short straw? You know, it's like, where is the other one? Yes. Yeah, it's like, how did I get the short yes. straw? 
I mean, I got my last hours, God. Got exactly, to be exactly. But that was supposed to happen. That was supposed to happen. Right. Well, you know what? It was because in those five days, like I said, I understood my mother like I had never understood mm. her before. I understood the the things that she went through. Yes. I understood her grief. And I think that's when I really started really understanding mm-hmm. even what grief was, right? So I understood, you know, what that grief and the things that she had been carrying with her yes. because her heart had been broken early and never allowed to heal. Oh, wow. You know, and, but I didn't understand that okay. until I had those days there when I was able to, you know, just kind of unpack all of, all of what had happened, the things that she said and the things that she didn't say, exactly. right? You know, the things that she never said, the things she never told us. Mm-hmm. In that time, I was able to put those, you know, kind of connect those dots. Exactly. And it was like, ah, and you know, now my sister and I sometimes will still say, you know, I'll say, well, you know what? Mommy probably X, Y, Z, you know, and she'll be like, yeah, I think so too, you know, or, you know, this was probably one of these things, but I never understood that until I was given that opportunity, you know, now some people say, you know, oh, it's a blessing to, you know, have to be beside, I was like, well, you know what, I could have done without this God, you you know, you could have let the other one stay, I would have been all right with it, in fact, I offered to stay, thinking because my sister is usually the one who does it. Mr. Compassionate she, one. She, you know, right. She because if she know that that ain't me. And usually she'll be like, well, no, I'll, I'll do, do it. it. But when I said, well, I'll stay and you can go home. She was like, well, okay. And I was like, what? <laughs> that was not what you were supposed to say. That's not how this story plays out. Exactly. <laughs> my sister said that, um, you know, with before when they were talking about putting her on the the uh, ventilator Uh and you know she was when she was getting sick and my sister said that she told her that she was calling me um because like she wouldn't eat Uh and stuff like that and so my sister said I told her well I'm gonna call Sonia to come you know she said that my mom was like don't call her (laughs) (laughs) I'll eat because see I'm the one that come in raising sand sand. you know I'm like you know what's the problem and then I ain't gonna have a whole lot of time to be playing around with you like what you trying to do you need to eat that food you know that yeah, you need to eat the food. You need to do what these people are telling you so that we can get on home and get this thing over with. And, um, you know, so she's like, my, my sister said, she was like, oh, don't call her. So I was like, she was probably in her uh, in her, in her her mind thinking, oh, man. Yes, no, please don't call her. Please don't call her. Right, like I got the, I got the short end. The, is the other one gone? Exactly. Can she like, come back? The other one gone, But you know right? what? And, when is she going to return? But to your point, and, and I say that because even when you said, but it was, it meant you knew you were supposed to be the one there. I felt like with my dad, it was good yeah. for me even to be yes. there with him. Cause I, I told yes. everybody, it felt like it was our time together and yeah. it, it just, it just yeah. felt good to just be there. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. I, I wouldn't give that up for anything in the world. And yeah. even though I think he got settled, he see everything was being taken care of every time he right. needed it, but Right. And I made sure those nurses and everybody took care of him. And, right. you know, I'm that one, too. It's just like, OK, I'm going to befriend everybody in that hospital that comes right, in. This right. Because I'm going to make sure I get what I'm going to get yes. what I need. And, you know, yes. you, we're so much yeah. alike that hey, I'm such an yeah. extrovert that I'm going right. to you're going to like me if you're dealing with my mom, my de- my parent, my child, right. anybody right. that I love. I'm going to make sure right. from the administrator to the cleaning hey. staff, they're going to know me. They're going to know me. Yeah. They're going to already know. Yeah. They're going to know what the cafeteria people, they're going to be like, Hey, <laughs> but, um, you know, but it was that time that, that I realized that I really got to yeah. know who exactly. she was, That's awesome. you know, I got to understand because then I really started to understand her heart oh, yeah. and the things that made her react to some things the way that she did right so um you know so from that I had always been saying you know I'm going to write a book I want to write this you know book I still haven't gotten to that part yet but I started with that of the story from her being in the hospital but you know it it is because I think that um you know there was so much to her you know like so many of so many black women I mean so many um of us have there's so much there's so many facets to our story um and that you know, I think in my mom's, in my mom's instance, and I'll say this, and then I won't belabor you with it. But, you know, as I sat there and watched my mom, you know, I, one of the things that I thought about 
those those whole five days is I wonder what she would have been if she had have only believed in her greatness. Aww. You know, if she had only believed in in the things she had been knocked down so mm-hmm. much that I don't think that she believed, mm-hmm. you know, in in her yes. greatness. And, you know, just in thinking of the things that she was able to accomplish with what she had been mm-hmm. given, I was life. like, but, you know, if she had only believed, you know, mm-hmm. that she A, deserved it, that B, she could do it, you know, like, I just wonder, wow. you know, like, what would it have been? You know, what would it have of looked course. like if if she had believed in that? But, you know, so I had that opportunity to understand mm-hmm. her. But like I said, you know, I was like, God, you can take this back. And take it back. Like, yes, I didn't ask for it. Another one. And I'll go on back Thank to the you. house. I didn't, right? Yes, none of us asked for this. <laughs> I agree. Right, I agree. Right. But that's wonderful. I, I, so uh, definitely for sake of time. And, and Dr. Sonia, let me tell you, it seemed like still so much we can talk about. But I want to still ask because I want to make sure you share with everybody a lot of the other things that you are doing that that involves still everyone around this um, recovery of grief and everything that that pays um, that's something you did out of respect for your mother and other mothers. You have something and you tell me which one comes first. You have something that you've done or started in 2022. It's called Beyond the Sunshine Mother's Day Brunch. And mm-hmm. I'm just going to go ahead and let this post mm-hmm. you tell us where they fit. It's something okay. called the Porch Foundation, LLC. Tell us about each one yes. of those, please, and what, they, what they're what they about. Yeah, so real so real quickly. No, don't go. Um, I don't want to say quickly. I don't want to keep rushing. <laughs> but no, 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 no. I, I, I do want to be respectful of time. But um, but so from, from really the first Mother's Day um, that, that I had without mm-hmm. my mother, right? So my, my birthday is around Mother's Day yeah. too. So, um, you know, I always find a reason to celebrate yeah. myself. But it, but the first one was was um, was particularly hard, you know, um, as it is for, for not any different from mm-hmm. anybody else who's lost a mother. But I wondered, you know, that first Mother's Day, how do people get through this, you know? And from the very first Mother's Day, I wanted to, and, you know, invite some of my friends who I knew had lost their mothers. And I was like, well, you know, I should have a brunch, Mm -hmm. you know? So I tell my sister and I live together. And again, she's the domesticated one too. So she do the cooking and all that. So I was like, we should have a brunch, but she was just like, "Mm -hmm." Mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, well, she ain't really (laughs) feeling that then. So, (laughs) so, um, but, but it had been on my heart, right? So Um, that I always wanted to have this brunch. And I had talked to a friend of mine about it. And she said, you know, yeah, that's a great idea. And I'll help you do it. And, you know, and then I was like, okay. And then I kind of didn't do anything with it. And then, you know, and again, here is, you know, when you put it out there in the atmosphere, God just kind of makes things happen, right? So this year, um, I said, I want to have the brunch. And, but I don't know where I'm going to have it. I ain't really got no money to do this thing, right? Because so, because in my heart, so my heart, everybody who knows me, my heart is I want to be free, right? I don't want nobody to have to pay. I just want you to come. Yeah. And, okay, but so God was like, well, listen, girl, I ain't gave you that uh-huh. yet. You can't do that yes. free yet. Um, I notice I yes. say yet, because I, I believe he's going to make course. it happen. I agree yes. 100%. Yes, but, um, but so I said, well, you know, I want and I don't want it to be very expensive. So I was, you know, kind of looked around at places. I kind of played with it, right? I picked it up, I put it down. I picked it up, I put it down. And um, and just one day, you know, I um a friend of mine said, Well, what are you afraid mm-hmm. of? Mm. And I um, so I was I had a this I had a career coach on my job. And so I was like, well, you don't need really to coach me on this, I'm gonna be retired from this soon, but let's talk about what I want to do in my yes. other life. So we were talking about the grief. In fact, she, I credit her for getting me into the grief recovery mm-hmm. method program and all mm-hmm. that. She had, had been through the program and recommended it. But um, so she said, well, what are you afraid of? And I said, well, I'm afraid that, you know, I don't know, I'm afraid it won't yeah. be good. I'm afraid that people won't mm-hmm. come. You know, I'm, I'm afraid that, yeah. it, you know, these things. And so she said, well, you know what? Build it and people mm-hmm. will come. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't know. That was like a year and a half before I actually yes. did it. And I was like, well, you know, okay, I'll do it. Um, and then this year I was thinking about it and I had the same thought and God said to me, build it and people mm. will come. So I, I, I thought 
my sister always says, you know, you know so many people, and if you put it out there, people are gonna come. But you know, I'm like, you don't really know because people yeah. are flaky, you know. You know, when that time comes, yeah, people can be like, right, you know, and so um I said, Well, okay, you know, we made the little invitation. Mm-hmm. Another friend helped me make the invitation and we put it out. And I so my initial thought was I said 50 people, right? I'm gonna do it for 50 people. My sister said, you should do it for more than 50 people because every time you say 50, you know. I say I'm inviting 20 people over and it'd be like yeah. 100. So she was yeah. like, you should do it for more than 50 people. But I, you know, I put it out there at 50 because I was like, well, if I don't sell 50, mm-hmm. right, I can eat the cost of some yeah. of the other. So I said, well, you know, I'm going to um, pay for the facility myself. Mm-hmm. I wanted to do that. And then so the ticket price could be lower and just have to pay for mm-hmm. the food. Then I started calling around to, um, so I found the perfect place, right? It was, had hardwood floors like my mama's house. And, you know, and I was like, oh, this yeah. is perfect. Then I started calling around the caterers and I was like, you know, oh, these prices I can't afford, right? And um, I was like, but you know, I don't tell people what, what their service yeah. is worth, right? Because I'm just saying I yes. can't afford yeah. you. I ain't saying it yeah. ain't worth it. Um, and I was flipping through Facebook one day and I ran across um, the profile of a we of a friend who had a of of this guy I know who had a, we had a mutual mm-hmm. friend, and I and he, he his the mutual friend was the friend that I talked about who had passed away just before yes. my mom, and so he used to cater a lot of things for him right so I was like oh he does good for, I wonder if he's still catering, so I inboxed him and I said hey are you still mm-hmm. catering and and he didn't you know recognize me or anything he said yeah you know call me mm-hmm. you know. So we connected and, and you know, we, when I told him and, and I said, you know, what I wanted to do before I had even mentioned our mutual mm-hmm. friend, before I had, you know, mentioned anything about that, I told him what I wanted to do. And he said, mm-hmm. I'll do it. Mm-hmm. And um, I was like, well, you know, now the last one, he said, don't worry about that. I said, you know, cause I don't know about, you know, money. And so he said, don't worry mm-hmm. about that. And um, I was like, Ooh, you know, look at God yeah. showing out. Right. So um, I was like, but you know, he's going to probably be like, well, you can get like two yeah. chicken fingers and some, you know, so he said, I do it. And before he even gave me a menu, he said, I'm only going to charge you $1,200. Mm. Mm. So now my other, now the other quotes, mind you, were 3000 and more. Of course. And um, he said, I'm only going to charge you $1,200. So I told my sister, I was like, well, he say, he ain't going to charge for $1,200, mm-hmm. but you know how it go. Like he going to, yeah. you know, he sent me the menu and I was like, oh, you know, this is great. Cause this is basically what the other person was charging me 3000 wow. and something uh-huh. for. Right. So I'm like, mm, it's going to come back something yeah. later. He told me, he said, I'm going to do this for you because I lost my mother a few years mm. ago. And, you know, he said, and I struggled. Mm. And so, you know, he said, so I want to, you know, be able to help. So I was like, oh, thank you. You know, so we did it. We talked about the menu. He called me about three days before the event. And he said, I'm adding some stuff to your menu. Mm. He said, because, you know, I want this to be, it's going to be nice because the food is going to be yeah. nice anyway. He said, but I want it to be really, really nice. Right. So I was like, well, I mean, I ain't got no more money to pay you now. Look, I done paid you a little bit. Know, so right? trying to add. And, uh, and he said, no, it's the not going to cost for you his mother. Thing. Yeah, he said it's not gonna cost you a thing. Wow. When I tell you, the the I mean, it was so wonderful. The food was yeah. wonderful. Another friend of mine, um, she does some work with Hank Stewart. She called me one day and she said, I asked Hank if he would come through your mm. brunch. Really? I said, I ain't got no money to pay Hank right now. Hank know that this, this is, is free. free now. And she was like, Yeah, you know, she was like, Yeah, I, you know, I told him, and you know, and he said he can't stay, but he'll come through your brunch. He came through, he did his, you know, poetry. The food was immaculate. The the decorations, you know, another friend of mine helped my sister decorate. Mm-hmm. It all came together. But the one thing that was just so heartwarming for me. So a start with, I think I told you I said it was people. 50 and I wasn't even sure if I was gonna get 50, right? So I kept up. Yeah. And I upped it to 75. Uh-huh. Everybody, you know, it was every time I'm like, it sold out. People were calling me. Oh, I didn't get my yeah. ticket. So I upped it to 75. And I probably could have sold more, but the room wouldn't have held mm-hmm. me. Um, but there ended up being 80 people. Are you kidding? 80 people. And so many people were texting me and calling me and saying, and I was like, but you know, it's COVID and I just yeah. can't, you yeah. know, I need to. So you know, to it would have been more. Keep. 
Oh yeah. And so, um, and people, when they left, were like, well, you know, what are we going to do next year? So I said, well, you mean you want to do it next year? And they were like, well, yeah. And I was like, well, hey, what are we going to do it? Um, Wonderful. But so many people who left, so many women who left, um, told me there were some from who had recently lost mm-hmm. their mothers, you know, six months yeah. or less to people who had lost their mothers. Um, there's a friend of mine who's a, a Delta dear, so she's 75 mm-hmm. and she lost her mother like you when she was wow. 12 and she was there. And, um, but so in all in between, but so many people, one lady came up to me and told me she had lost her mother 30 years before mm. that. And she said that for the first time in 30 years, she felt like she could celebrate Mother's Day. And that was, you know, so for me, I was like, that's all I want. You know, I wanted to help people be able to get through Mother's Day, you know, and to be able to not dread because, you know, you're going to feel sad just because, but to not dread because I had been talking to some people who said they don't even get out of the bed on Mother's Day or they don't even, you know, and I was like, I I can't imagine that because it is. You know, I'm like, I'm a mother and that girl about to celebrate me. On my Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Say my mother would be mad if I slayed him this day. Right. If I yes. didn't get these gifts. Yeah. Right. But I, you know, but I really, you know, I, 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 I thought about it, but I guess I hadn't thought about it in that magnitude, yeah. right? That there's so many people that the time, time does not take away the pain. No, it doesn't. And that they were not, you know, not celebrating or not doing these mm-hmm. things around Mother's Day. And she said, for the first time in 30 years, mm-hmm. I can, I feel like I can celebrate Mother's Day. So many people text me after, you know, after Mother's Day saying, you know, how they, it was like a mm-hmm. lift, you know, how, how it felt like um, this kind of veil had been yes. lifted from them to be able to, you know, celebrate. And so next year, we're planning to do it again. I plan to um, do it in a much larger yes. venue because they told me that venue wasn't small enough. But out of that, um, when I was trying to think of names of what I would call the yeah. brunch, um, my sister and I were, you know, kind of going back and, you know, a time we were sharing stories and just kind of thinking of something to, you know, share stories about our mother. But all the stories about, about my mom always um, culminated with our front mm-hmm. porch. So, you know, she had this great big porch. She loved her front porch. Sometimes I think she might've loved it more than she loved us. But, um, you know, so there was, her front porch was her, the place where she she sat all the Mm -hmm. time, rain or shine, you know, up until it got too cold to sit there. Um, And and I mean, and we lived in that house for 40 years. So my mother was 70 um, when she passed away. So you know, for, so that means that she was, she was porch sitting yeah. in her thirties, yeah. you know, so, um, but she, that's where all her friends came. When she passed away, there were people, um, you know, who came, like somebody asked me to go to yeah. bathroom. And I'm like, you know, they were regular visitors to our house. So I was like, well, you know, go ahead where it is. And they were like, well, where is it? I'm like, you mean, you don't know where the bathroom yeah. is? They just sit on the porch. And, they, and, 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 and she said, we always sit on the yeah. porch. You know, she said, whenever I come by here, your mom's outside. We always sit on the porch. Not that she doesn't let people in, but that's just where people felt comfortable and they stopped. And um, one of the things that I was thinking about the porch was like, that was where everybody came and they told their, you know, they, if they needed advice, you know, they came and they were talking to her on the porch and she was giving Mm -hmm. advice or if they, you know, were hurt or whatever. Um, So I thought of porch and then I thought, well, you know, thinking of her Uh porch, was a place of refuge, comfort, and hope or happiness. And, and everyone, that's what you know, PORCH and stands hope. for. That's what the P. That's what PORCH O-R-C- stands for. P-O-R-C-H. And what is that again? Yeah. A place of refuge, comfort, hope, happiness, or hugs. Whatever wow. you needed, you could get it on the porch. Wow. And so that's, um, I thought, I told my sister, I was like, well, you know, so now I had this profound thought. Now we got to do something yeah. with that. And um, so, you know, I, I said, well, we'll do, we're going to do a nonprofit, mm-hmm. you know, what I want the nonprofit to do. And I'm still working through that because, again, all of this just happened in May. But, you know, I want it to be, um, you know, a, an organization that will help single mothers. Oh, wonderful. Because my mother had been a single mother, you know, she had been a teenage mm-hmm. mother. Um, and, you know, against all odds, she had, you know, done a lot of things that 
I'm sure lots of people said she to wouldn't do. be able to yeah. do, you know, it would have never been able mm -hmm. to, but I want the Porch Foundation to be um, an organization that helps and gives hope to, you know, young single mothers yeah. and helps them get to the next, the next step. So what all that means, I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I'm just kind of working it through and I'm just going to let God lead me in whatever he thinks it's supposed mm -hmm. to be. I'm feeling like it's going to be um, that. But so that's so out of the Beyond the Sunshine mm -hmm. brunch, um, which is now, as my friends say, an is annual event. Um, it's an annual event. So out of the, the, the Beyond the Sunshine brunch came the Porch Foundation. Oh, and um, so, you know, next year, I hope that the Porch Foundation will be able to, you know, either offer its first grant or its first yeah. scholarship or its first, you know, something um, to a young single mother. Build it and they will come. And Build it and they will and, come. And, and yeah. everything you speak, it happens. I'm looking forward yeah, to I'm now the, the the sunshine beyond the sunshine Mother's Day brunch. But um, I normally go. Yes, it's going to be the last Saturday. Last in April. Saturday in April. I normally I get up and I move and go, but I have mm -hmm. a friend who won't even go to right. church that Sunday, and you know yeah. she'll say she's okay, but she just don't. And, they, and some right. people just made right. things a habit. I believe you know, I'm not saying they're right. not mourning still that part, but that's something to them that feels like this is my thing. And, but wow, I love, love, love every last yeah. thing you say. And I think that some people think that it is forgetting or dishonoring yeah. if they don't feel sad sometimes, right? If I, if I celebrate, you know, like, how about we turn yeah. that around? I, you know, we celebrate, celebrate her. you know, and celebrate the fact that, you know, I, in the very beginning, from the very beginning, I've always gone to church and all that. I've never felt, um, I've never felt envious yes. of people who still Thank have you. their mothers right because of the feeling that you know the heartbreak so in my opinion i'm happy that you still oh, have God. your mother because i don't want you to be feeling this heartbreak Thank that you. i'm feeling you know that and the fact that you have the opportunity to still celebrate Thank your mother i'm happy yes. for you you know I'm i just have some type of way. I, so I try to keep i feel that. some type of way only dr sonia when they don't treat their parent right <laughs> Right. When they don't treat them right. Yeah. The no, time, true. But I'm with right. you on that part. Yeah. True. I don't want you to yeah, feel I mean, this. and I, I try to keep that. Yeah. I, I try to keep that, that I'm happy because you have yeah, your mother to still right. celebrate. And then I'm also happy that I had my mother, that I had the lessons that she taught me, that I had the, you know, I had 70 Amen. years. That. you know and some people don't some people don't get yes. that right and I, I'm happy that I was able to pick up um you know so much knowledge and wisdom from her that um that I hopefully can you know carry on and help other people with so I try not to be sad yeah. or envious you know during those times because you know, I, I I have to think about it in that she had fulfilled her exactly. assignment. You know, like they say everybody now she understood the assignment. Well, she, she understood she exactly. Did. And everyone you she know, said she, she hopes she's assignment. doing the things that you give me a break, Dr. Sonia. You you are doing it and more. <laughs> and, and you know what? And yeah, thank and everyone you. out there, we're gonna ask her how we can you can follow her or how you can find out if you need help. And in and, and getting through whatever you may you may be dealing with today that you may not know that you're dealing with, consider we're gonna consider consider her as someone that you can talk to because you can tell Dr. Sonia your heart is you say your sister is the compassionate one. Maybe you yeah, just to do it. Is. Okay, you say <laughs> I I believe that, but yours show huge compassion when you want everybody to come for free at the mother's day brunch, which is what I would love too. Yeah. I wouldn't want no one to pay. I really do. So yeah. trust me, yeah. you got more compassion than you know, but I understand you, you just business and, 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 and get it done first. You black and white with getting things done, but oh, that compassion shows through everything you've yeah. said yeah. on this podcast. Uh, yeah, today. It is, it's so on my heart is always first. Yes. To be free. I'm like, you know, I don't want people to pay for that. Yes. I don't want grievers to have to pay, you know, so um yeah look i want it your sister to, to listen to this and she said oh yeah you're a little bit sensitive than i thought you were <laughs> <laughs> right 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 well you know she always she right she always says tells people i'm just a big old that's softy. It. she's like ah oh, she just you know she just carries a big stick but she really a big that's, old and that's softy. normally that one that's a tough cookie but everybody look at it. 
Yeah, that right. person is the one <laughs> right. who, if you see their heart, it is huge. Yeah. I know people like, I yeah. know exactly what you're saying. That's that's me. I always tell people I yeah. cried. I'm a weeping me. Oh, I do too. Right. I, I do. I'd be crying at TV yes. programs. I'll be like, I'm not happy, you know, and you know, somebody die on TV. Now they ain't just yes. die on TV. And I'd be like, oh. And then you see me other places like, she's tough. Oh, you just don't know. She's tough. Yeah. Right. Exactly. You don't know. I was probably crying. Got out of here. I got it out of me already. <laughs> and because I want to ask you how to get your book and how to reach you tell me this first how do you relax because this is a heavy topic like you said talking to people about the loss death is heavy so how do you Dr. Sonia relax it is yourself? it yeah it's it's very heavy and what I have found is that you know um, I submerge myself in doing a lot of things, right? So I'm always trying to do things because, you know, I literally think about how I can help somebody in yes. my sleep or, you know, what people may need. I literally, be, that like literally keeps me up yes. at night. But, um, you know, but one of the things that, you know, some of the things I do to, to relax, like I like to sing. So I, you know, I sing in mm -hmm. choirs and, um, you know, that helps me relax. But I also just, you know, have, have this year really discovered the art of doing nothing. Wonderful. Um, I don't, you know, it, it still feels strange to me though, to not be committed to yes. something, but, um, but relaxing with a good book, you know, just kind of laying back and sitting back with a good book. I absolutely love the beach. So having, you know, sand between my wonderful. toes is a wonderful way to relax mm -hmm. and, you know, and hanging out with good friends, you know, good people and being around good people who pour mm -hmm. into you. Um, and you know, I, I tell people, you know, I got the dopest friends cause they be yeah. telling me I can do stuff that I never thought I could do. They'd be like, Oh girl, you can do it. I'd be like, yeah, I know they just been up. hyping you up. That's good to have that hype group. <laughs> <laughs> right. They'd be like, Oh, you can do it. Go ahead. And I'm like, you know, I if just, anybody they say you can know, do but, it, be um, you. I'm yeah, but it, but you know, but hanging out with good people. I mean, I Positive. think that you know that that's kind of key to um, even healing is having good people. You know, not necessarily where you're dumping your problems on them because you know you have to be careful of that of too. When you are when you're sad, you know, you don't be dumping on other people that you bringing them oh, down to. But um, but having good people around you who you know allow you to be who you are and give you the space to. Um, to grow and the space to heal and, you know, who say, girl, I got you Amen and mean it, that. you know, and who, um, you know, who show it, you know, not just words, but who show it. And, and I think that's how I relax. I love to hang out and laugh and have a good time, you know, eating. I like to do, of course, my doctor say you need to go and quit doing that. But, uh, <laughs> that's awesome. but I like to, you know, I like to do that. I mean, for a few years, um, you know, I was a mm -hmm. runner. But, you know, now I'm just lazy, but my knees are, are not as what they used to be. So I had started, um, you know, but I started running. So that's, and I even still like yeah. to walk, you know, like just go out there and walk it out when I'm feeling real, because it is a very heavy yeah. topic. Um, I had a family back in the mm -hmm. summer, uh, last summer, and it was very heavy after uh, with them because they had experienced a lot of yes. loss um, in that one family and, you know, just a short, short, short yes. amount of time. And I found after working with them, I was like, oh, you know, I'm really kind of mm -hmm. drained. Of course, but of um, So I just, I kind of took a few, you know, took a few months off. I didn't take any more clients over That's the good. summer. And, um, you know, and then I started back, which I think, you know, is, is going to kind of be um, maybe how I operate from now on, because I do kind of like to have the summer free where I can, you know, pick up and go. And then I don't, you know, naturally when you're working with grievers, yes. You know, you can't just be like, well, girl, I'm gonna be gone for three mm -hmm. weeks, you know. Exactly. So, <laughs> you can, yeah. So um, but I, I did kind of decide, you know, last year that I will um kind of take um, you know, June and July off. And okay. So. Well, that's wonderful. And and everyone that always goes to show you that the people who do counseling and, and therapy, we we need that time to to, to yeah. you know, replenish ourselves as you pour out yeah. so much into yeah. other people so you can mm -hmm. be fresh to go back mm -hmm. again to help more people. Yep. So that's, that's wonderful to know. And we have to continue yeah. to do that. So yeah. let me ask you in the, this, I've been asking this after I you tell me about your, how to reach out to you and get your book. Is there any uh, last words you would love to say about something? I mean, not have asked about grief recovery that you think someone needs to hear right now that you think that, 
may not have been shared at this point? Um, I, I, the only thing I can just, that I really can not stress enough is that if your heart is broken for whatever reason, consider grief mm -hmm. recovery for whatever the reason, no reason is too small you know, no circumstance or situation is insignificant. And if your heart is broken, you know, acknowledge it and, and try to reach out and, and work through it. Oh, I love that. And, and everyone, there's a program that, again, that she does to help you. We didn't go through everything, you know, because she can't do the program on here. <laughs> um, right, 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 see, right. <laughs> she knows the different uh, methods to help you along with whatever that loss or that pain you're feeling, you know, today. So consider that. So yeah. tell us how we can reach out to you and, and get your book and reach you for grief recovery counseling. So you can um, go to the grief recovery method.com mm -hmm. and look under find a specialist and you type my name in and my uh, micro site will come out. Cause so Arlene, I've been, you know, I just been letting God lead the way. Right. So I, I don't have a real website. Yeah. I don't have a social media. And my daughter has been telling me this for the longest, like, mom, you need a. And so I told her, well, you can do that when you get it developed and I'll put it out there. But um, like so I, um, yeah, I was like, you know, those fine details. Who got exactly. time to work with that? She's like, mom, you need a, you need a website. You need that. I was like, okay, yeah, we're yeah, going to get that done. Coming. But, um, but if you go to the grief recovery and um, if you look for a find a specialist, then you can type in my name, Sonia, S-O-N-Y-A, Strider, S-T-R-I-D-E-R, and I should come up and you can then um, submit a email, the specialist, or you can email me directly at a place, the number four, the heart at gmail.com. And I will promise to get back with you. I finally got a calendar set up. So when people can, um, you know, I was trying to keep all these things in my mind. And then I was like, oh, I was supposed to call somebody yeah, today. So, now you got <laughs> so I have now I have a calendar right now. I have a calendar set up so you can um, make an appointment. Wonderful. I give a, a free 30 minute consultation mm -hmm. to, you know, just to see if this is exactly. right for you. It might not be. It might, you know, you might need or want something yeah. different or more. And, um, you know, but I, I do give a three, a free 30 minute consultation. Um, again, I never want to offer um, something that is so unaffordable for people who need the help. So, you know, we can, you know, work out payment opportunities yes. and, um, you know, kind of, you know, how that works because, you know, I'm not necessarily paying my light bill yes. with this, but I, um, you know, but again, you know, it, it is, it is time. Yes. And, um, but I, you know, I never want there to be, so I have some, I give some scholarships out. Wonderful. I give, um, you know, throughout the year for people who, you know, may not just may not be able to afford the cost. And I, um, I totally get it. And I, I totally, you know, understand again, how you need something that you can't pay for, but you really yeah. need it. And, um, you know, so we, you know, I work, I work with people, but if you um, email me at a place for the number for mm -hmm. the heart at gmail.com and, you know, we can have some conversation mm -hmm. and, and figure out what we can do and how we can go forward. And if anyone reaches out to her and heard her through this podcast, please let her know, because I would love to work something out with her yes. if that's the case. So please yes. let her know. I heard you on the path podcast and I would yes. definitely ask Dr. Sonia to reach out to me and let me see what I can do. I will. I absolutely will. So. Yeah. So that we, I mean, you know, and I also, you know, I, I thank you Arlene uh, for reaching out to me and giving me this opportunity. Um, you know, again, I, I, this has been a year of, um, all the stuff that I told God I wanted to do. Right. I mean, so some of the things I have told God, I said, you know, I want to be a, I want to be a speaker. I want to speak on, you know, this mm -hmm. topic. And, um, so I've had an opportunity to, I've been invited to, you know, a place to speak about yes. grief and, um, you know, and I said one day I was like, you know, I want to do a podcast. I don't even know what that is, but I want to do a podcast. And, you know, and then look, here you go. You called me and I was like, Hey, sure. Wow. Um, but, you know, so I thank you for giving me this opportunity to, um, 
to do the the podcast and to talk about, you know, the things that have broken our yes. hearts and how we can heal and move forward, especially after COVID, where we've lost so much and not really even been able to celebrate people, mm-hmm. you know, like we would normally choose to because of, you know, COVID restrictions and precautions and mm-hmm. all those kinds of things. So that adds and, and you know, exasperates the mm-hmm. grief because we've not been able to, you know, to have the big funeral exactly. that we might have been, you know, wanting to do or to celebrate, mm-hmm. you know, our loved one in the way that we know they would have yes. wanted to be celebrated and we've not been able to gather with our family. Mm-hmm. So, you know, all of those things are losses that yes. um, have been really, really much worse because of the pandemic. So um, I am committed to doing whatever God tells me he wants me to do. Wow. And let me say, you said thank you, but I thank you because when I'll keep going, could we see, I'll start talking because everything <laughs> you said, I want to talk about it. My daughter will be like, mom, you know how our daughters right. are. Right. She, right. She, right. They, they're stifling us. They're they stifling are. Us. We, that's okay. We'll just have we, to have lunch. We're going to have to do it. that. Please. Yes, we'll just have to have Let lunch. me tell you something you said, when you said you, your daughter said you need a website. I love the fact how you just getting out there doing it because I've been that one who sat back trying to get a web. I don't have one yet, but trying to get this, trying to get that. Mm-hmm. And there are people out there needing to hear these stories. And it's like, okay, no, Arlene. Mm-hmm. So when 2021 came after 2020, I'm like, Arlene, just start the podcast. Yeah. Just start doing just start. it. Yeah. And, and, and you got yeah. favor. So some, everyone I'm going to, I will have to meet her so I can touch her because, you know, favor <laughs> is on her and <laughs> we all we needed to Listen. rub off and, and, but, when I tell you, you just, it, when you said, when you tell God you're yeah. open um, and you're, you're, you know, and you mean that and you, and I think, you, you know, you give them your heart and say, I'm, I'm, you know, this is what I want to do for yes. your people. And if it is, if it is your will, will, you know, if it is your will that I do yes. this, I want you to show me how to do it and, um, you know, and give me the platform Amen. to do it. And ever since I think that I have honestly, because before I have still always been afraid, right? You know, I put it out there. Like part of the reason I don't have a website because I was like, you know, this thing might not be yeah. nothing. So I don't, you know, need to <laughs> you just start yeah. having a website. Yeah. So, you know, when you start doubting yeah. yourself, mm-hmm. right? And and um, and so this year, you know, I said, you know what, whatever you want this mm-hmm. to be, I'm going to yeah. do it. I mean, you know, other people have been asking me to do the Beyond the Sunshine brunch in uh, other states. Um, and so I'm thinking about that. Um, so I think I'm thinking about taking it home. So we're from Virginia. I'm thinking about taking it home to our Mm -hmm. hometown, um, next Mm -hmm. year, because a lot of people, you know, were like, I wish you, you know, we're doing this here. So I was like, well, you know, Mm -hmm. I might be able to do that, but, um, so, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to follow whatever God tells me to do. I'm, you know, I'm going to be open to it before I was, you know, questioning him and, you know, I'd be like, child, go on here somewhere with that guy. Cause I mean, yeah, uh, you got to show me first. Like, you know, like you got to put the money on the table. Yes, don't just keep yes. telling me you're going to provide. And we know he you don't know, always like, work that I'm way a, though, right? Right. You know, cause I'm like, I'm going to need to see yes. the check first. Don't be telling me you're going to yes. provide. I need the check first. Cause you know, I'm, show, show me, me. That's but, me, too. Um, yeah, That's me but, too. you know, so, but let me say thank yeah. you for coming as well. I really appreciate and am honored. So yep. everyone can consider, I mean, I'm, I feel like I, she's like my my family so I she's we're so much alike right, in so many spirits. ways reach out to her <laughs> if you need to get her again contact me I'll be happy to yes. get you over to her website and to her I will put all of that in the show note as well as how you can con- um, contact her for that so again I want to thank you and ev- let me end the show this way it's, I read something where it says everyone warns you that the anniversaries and the firsts are going to be hard, but no one tells you how grief shows up at even happy celebrations. So yep. it, it is a normal thing. Whether grief yep. was, was caused by the end of a loving of a loving relationship or a relationship where you never got what you wanted or needed, please know that your grief is valid. Remember yep. that grief is a natural, natural response to loss. Just remember there's help out there like Dr. Sonia and others who understands and in her words, passionate about helping you move 
from grief to recovery, from sadness to sunshine, and from pain to purpose. Yeah. Everyone, uh, again, Dr. Sonia, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Until next time, everyone. Thank you everyone for hanging with us. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and other platforms. So you can stay up on our bi-weekly real, real conversations with these bold women. You can follow The Path Podcast on Facebook at The Path Podcast and on Instagram and Twitter at The Path underscore podcast. And if you would like to be a guest on the show or have questions for a future show, you can email us at the path, the number four, W-A-R-D at gmail.com. That's the path forward at gmail.com. And if you're looking for a speaker or you're in need of a life coach, please reach out to me again at the path forward at gmail.com or at a c. K-O-R-L-E-H at gmail.com. Thank you. Until next time.